the highest mountains to the fiercest rivers and thickest jungle. From the coldest ice flows to hottest desert, the world is full of hostile landscapes that challenge the very existence of life. But animals seem determined to make a go of it. With specialized bodies, unusual diets, and unique behaviors, they have conquered every corner of the globe. They are the true masters of the wild. About a third of the world's land mass is arid. Perhaps the most terrifying landscape, the most threatening to life, the desert. Hot days and cold nights stress the rocks, causing them to crumble. With little rain, it's tough for plants to grow. Without roots binding the soil, the earth blows as loose sand. To master the desert, animals must avoid overheating and retain what little water they can find. The desert hedgehog of the Middle East has larger ears than its northern cousins. Here, blood passes close to the surface and can be cooled by the gentlest breeze. He has another desert specialism. His kidneys are masters of functioning with little water. He can go long periods without a drink. Water is hard to come by, but he knows one unlikely source. Juicy grubs are usually enough to quench his thirst. It's unusual for the hedgehog to be active by day. Normally he prefers the cool night. When a desert storm threatens to erupt, he returns to the comfort of his den. Animals must take shelter. A wall of sand, one and a half kilometers tall, threatens to blast everything in its path. As soon as it's over, animals can go about their business. Desert lizards don't have burrows, but scales on their legs are shaped for digging. Their ability to dive for cover doesn't just save them from storms. The surface sands can reach scalding temperatures, but just below, the earth remains cool.
He can lie in wait and watch for prey. But if danger threatens, it's also a great way to disappear. Insects are among the greatest desert specialists. Their shells retain moisture, and their juicy bodies support a wealth of larger animals. Despite adaptations, the greatest tool desert animals have is shade. When the sun climbs, everything looks for a cool spot. Anything will do for a resourceful beetle, but this time he's in for a rough ride. Only as the day cools will most of the desert dwellers appear. Scorpions are the real kings of survival. Thanks to their waxy armor, they lose less water to the hot desert winds than any other animal and can withstand losing 40% of their body weight to dehydration. Scorpions are effective predators, but tonight it's not his stomach on his mind. He rendezvous with a female and invites her to a moonlight ball. But he's not impressing her with his dance moves. A few flicks of her deadly tail, and he soon gets the point. Scorpions may have mastered the environment, but despite their fearsome reputation, they come under heavy attack. With potent venom, this one stalks the Namibian desert. The meerkat quickly disables the sting. The reward, a protein-rich treat that's full of moisture. Meerkats are a kind of mongoose that live in close-knit family gangs. They cooperate to make desert living easier. All members of the gang will help raise the children, even suckling one another's pups to ensure the gang's size in the future. Long claws are ideal for digging the underground system of tunnels central to their home range. They can relax and play thanks to a superb guard system. If you're a meerkat, someone's always got your back. The youngsters learn from the gang how to forage for the grubs that will sustain their lives in the desert.
and they'll learn how to dig the burrows that will protect them from danger, cool them by day, and shelter them through chilly nights. Another secret of meerkat success is their dark eyes. Like sunglasses, the dark eye patches reduce glare from the desert sun. Some sportsmen put black stripes of makeup under their eyes for the same reason. Having a keen-eyed lookout is essential. In the desert, dangers can come from all sides. The jackal is a wily and persistent predator. But with an early alarm system, the meerkats have the upper hand. The meerkats have some look-alike neighbors. But these amigos are not related. African ground squirrels like living close to the meerkats to take advantage of their homeland defenses. The squirrels also enjoy the good things in life, living in close-knit groups. But while meerkats might take to their tunnels when it gets hot outside, the squirrels put up their umbrellas. Their oversized tails act as the perfect parasol, offering welcome shade from the sun. The jackal must drink frequently to survive so must stay close to water holes. But this party for one is being crashed. Sand grouse dip their breast feathers in the pond, which act like sponges, soaking up the precious liquid so they can airlift it back to their chicks hidden far out in the desert. The jackal can only watch them fly away. The parched plains of the Namib challenge wildlife, but even big game have found solutions. The biggest land mammal. The African elephant is an unlikely master of the desert. Desert elephants enjoy fresh greens in the wet season, but survive on tough twigs and bark through the worst of summer. There is little food that's out of reach, and they can acquire fresh greens the other animals can't get at. A bull can eat up to 250 kilos of food a day. But the biggest challenge for these behemoths is water. The elephants must march for miles in search of a drink. But it's not GPS that guide them. It's an incredible memory. The matriarch of the family will lead the way teaching the rest of her herd the best locations. 
In this way, generations of elephants will share the knowledge they need to survive. Desert elephants have unusually long legs for the trek. Without water for a good mud pack, they bathe in sand to keep their skin healthy. Memory brings them to a dried up riverbed. They can smell that water lies just below the surface. They might drink 160 liters in a sitting, enough for several days. Not all elephants face a water shortage. In the lush rainforests of Central Africa, there's a cousin, the smaller forest elephant. Clearings are a sign of their handiwork. There's no shortage of water in the jungle, and yet these elephants still dig. There's plenty of food and fruit makes up the bulk of their diet. But many plants contain toxins to deter browsers, so elephants use the mud to neutralize the caustic compounds, a natural antidote. By digging and blowing bubbles, they make an elephant smoothie, a cocktail of minerals to keep them fit and healthy. Many herds converge on the same mineral-rich waterholes, creating a clearing that all forest animals can enjoy. Minerals are essential to another master of the wild. In the Amazon, a spectacular diversity of colorful parrots enjoy the bounty of the forest. An unusual foot, two toes facing forward and two facing back is ideal for gripping food, while its powerful bill and dexterous tongue go to work. But the juicy fruits they harvest lack salt, so these birds go in search of some seasoning. They will even travel several kilometers to get to it. It's like a chemist dispensing vitamin and mineral tablets. Dexterous tongues and powerful beaks make short work of the mud bank. Then it's back to the jungle for more junk food. Even in the Amazon, getting a good diet can be a tough nut to crack. But this bird's got it licked.
To avoid the competition from other parrots, the biggest, the hyacinth macaw, specialized in tough food and will even tackle hard-shelled Brazil nuts. The master masticators use tools, specially crafted pieces of wood to help hold the nut in place while they apply pressure, just like a precision nutcracker. Colorful and intelligent, these are not your average bird brains. Eating out in the rainforest can put you at risk of attack, especially if you're very small. So some specialists prefer to eat at home. These leafcutter ants carefully select good-looking leaves, cut off a healthy portion and carry it home. With amazing strength, they can haul 50 times their body weight. It can be enough to freak out the neighbors. The leaves are not dinner for them, they're farmers. In their safe underground colonies, they tend a garden of fungus. They don't get to eat the fruits of their labor. These workers get a meager diet of a few sips of leaf sap, but the fungi they grow is used to feed baby ants, the next generation of farmers. In the Amazon rainforest, water shortage is not a problem. Water's everywhere. Agile aerial acrobats, great dusky swifts, duck and dive the fierce flow of a waterfall. The birds have learned that the water acts as a curtain. Behind it, they are out of sight and out of the reach of predators. Swifts are built for the air. Their legs are small to reduce weight, but with tiny claws they cling to the slippery rocks. They squabble for the best spots, but once boundary lines have been established, they begin to build. Mud is glued in place with sticky saliva. They can get a bit dirty, but luckily, their accommodation comes with a built-in shower. Soon the mud huts are occupied. An anxious
anxious father awaits. But before long, the secret colony behind the falls welcomes a new addition. It takes more than two months to raise the youngsters, allowing them to develop the large stiff wings that will carry them through life. Then they will join the flocks, the true masters who have turned a dangerous feature of the landscape into something that protects them. The churning waters and constant rain feed the great Amazon River. Here, animals have adapted in new ways. The Boto, a dolphin of the Amazon. In the murky tea-colored water, stained by the tannins of rotting leaves, eyes are of little use. And so the Bottos have become minute. But they have a different way of seeing. They emit high-frequency sounds that bounce off objects in their path. By listening to the echoes, they can build a virtual picture of their environment, even though they can't see it. The Amazon, like all rivers, flows to the ocean, resulting in an in-between world of land and sea. Where rivers meet the sea, animals have to cope with changing levels of salt and fresh water, and with daily periods of flooding and drought. There are a few specialists who have mastered the Asian mangroves. Fiddler crabs make hay while the sun shines. In the few hours that the beaches are exposed, they pick over the mud, munching an algae, and all the while waving their oversized pincer to keep competition at bay. But while the crabs are being crabby, they have a fish neighbor that actually prefers to be out of the water. First, a spring clean. Every time the tide recedes, the mud skipper clears mud from its burrow. It's important that it has an air pocket down there when the waters return. They then set out to feed. With lead-like fins, they walk on land. They are only able to do so because they can breathe through their skin. The only catch is, they have to keep it wet. A big bubble of air inside their gills acts like an oxygen tank while they explore. Mudskippers are a bit touchy about intruders and flash their fins at the neighbors. When the tide turns, a race begins. Gobble as much as possible, but still leave time to get back underground. A wave of crabs precede the water. Back in their burrows, they'll wait for drier times when predators have returned to the sea. From sea level, the earth rises.
All of the great land masses of the world have been buckled by a geological force into majestic mountain ranges. At their peaks, temperatures are cold and the air thin, but the masters of the wild still endure. Ibex are king of the castle, tailor-made to conquer even the most treacherous terrain. At home on the skyline, it's the females with a head for heights. For most of the year, they live separated from the males, raising their kids at 3,000 meters on slopes of about 40 degrees, well beyond the reach of most predators. The secret to their success lies in their toes. The two toes on each foot can work independently of each other. The tough hoof has a rubber core that acts like a sneaker to grip the rocks, aided by a smaller pair of dew claws. The feet can also be used to manipulate branches to get hard to reach leaves. They can eat almost anything and on the sparse rock faces make a meal of moss, leaves and twigs, even lichens that they scrape from the boulders. Living at lower elevations, the billy goats avoid competition with their mates and kids, but in winter they come together to breed. When the temperatures drop, their coats thicken up as defense against the cold. While the mountains of the northern hemisphere are mastered by sheep and goats, in the dramatic South American Andes, it's a camel that has climbed to victory. A new arrival on the slopes, a guanaco, a small humpless camel. After 11 and a half months of pregnancy, the little one is finally ready to make an entrance. He's been born with a woolly fleece that will soon dry out and help keep him warm. All the herd's lambs have been dropped at the same time. There is safety in numbers, with more babies born than a predator could destroy. They play together in a large crash. The lamb's nursery is 4,000 meters above sea level, where there's less oxygen. But to keep him active, he has four times more red blood cells than a human. Sporting the classic camel toe, two rubbery pads, he can belt across the steep terrain. Adults can reach over 50 kilometers per hour. Which is just as well, when danger threatens in the mountains, there is nowhere to hide.
The puma, or mountain lion, Guanaco enemy number one. Keen ears and sharp eyes help the herd to spot a threat. The herd males seem more interested in each other than the lion, fighting over access to females. Thickened skin on their necks protects against bites. So they aim for the sensitive belly of their opponent. Tough mountain vegetation is a challenge, but the Coronaco's three-chambered stomach squeezes out the maximum nutrients and reabsorbs water. As a result, they can go for several days without a drink. But that won't be the herd's only struggle against the elements. Winter in the Andes can be tough. But there are even harsher places for animals to make a living. The Arctic tundra. Too cold and dry for most. But there is an animal, an Ice Age survivor, that is perhaps the master here. Cute and cuddly belie the tough heritage of this musk oxen calf. His body is cloaked in kiviot an undercoat that is 10 times warmer than sheep's wool. And slowly growing over that are long guard hairs that can block the wind and keep insects at bay. He'll molt his wool every year, but the guard hairs keep growing and in adults can drag along the ground. The coat is so effective that in summer, even in the Arctic, the great beasts can overheat. The remedy? A cold bath. The calf can eat vegetation when he's only a week old, but he'll still need to take milk from his mother for his first year. Thanks to its high fat content, the little guy's gaining around half a kilo a day. Mushrooms supplement the chewy mainstay of lichens, mosses and tough grass. He's going to need to grow that fur and gain as much weight as possible for what lies ahead.
Even now, the musk ox seems immune, blanketed in the world's warmest natural fiber. Musk ox have evolved stout, barrel-shaped bodies, short legs, ears and tail, all adaptations to reduce their body surface so that less heat is lost to the wind. Broad, sharp hooves make excellent snow shovels to dig out dinner. They are so fantastically adapted that the musk ox hasn't changed since the Ice Age when it grazed alongside woolly mammoths. The bulls even have the energy to fight in the snow. Further north, and the land disappears, replaced by sheets of ice. This is the realm of the polar bear. A true Arctic specialist, polar bears spend the dark winter months hunting seals on the ice, but when summer arrives, their world is transformed. When the ice cap melts, the bears are forced to swim. Truly marine mammals, they have slightly webbed feet and can swim 100 kilometers or more. But eventually, even they must find their way to shore. Polar bears live almost entirely on blubbery seals. Now high and dry, the seals are out of reach and there is little for the bear to eat. Ever resourceful, they consume whatever they can. They will follow their sensitive noses to check out any potential source of food. An old settlement, 
there are still scents of humans and their food in the air. Bears converge for a closer look. In the Arctic, the only way to survive is to be opportunistic. To sustain their large bodies, the bears are pre-programmed to check out everything they find as a potential food source. Their adaptability is perhaps the key to their success. All animals have become perfectly evolved to suit their habitats, no matter how extreme. But in this changing world, perhaps the real masters are those that have learned to live alongside a challenging neighbor. The human world can be a dangerous one. But for the bold and inquisitive, endless possibilities awaits. Animals have conquered every corner of the globe, each deploying their own strategies. They are true masters of the wild. <laughs>